YouTube, it's Brian Phillips here. We're here with the Apprentice S 1.5 meter version, which is the full size version. And I want to do, do a quick build video tonight. When I say quick, you guys that know my channel will probably laugh. Uh, we'll make it as quick as possible. I love this plane. I've had such a blast flying it. Um, I did make a big boo-boo last night. Um, I don't know how many 50s of times I took off and landed, but I uh, eventually made a mistake. This plane I got for for my friend, and I made the mistake of crashing it, and I screwed it up pretty bad, as you can see from the cowling here. But I, I fixed it enough to, to be just fine, and had to redo the spinner. Uh, the prop survived, the motor survived, the motor mount didn't. Had to fix that up. And other than that, the tail broke off completely. I fixed that last night. I was debating about filming the repairs. Um, to be honest with you, this thing will fly just as good as it did before because I am used to fixing these things. And I actually didn't do this. This had been flipped over and crashed once before. And I'll tell you why. I'm going to demonstrate what I did wrong. Throttle cuts on. The servos for later. Got your battery. This is not the the right one. These are just my shop crappy batteries. Okay, throttle cuts down. Throttle cuts on, rather. Throttles down. Everything is ready to rock and roll. You come over to the plane, like any other AS3X plane that you're used to flying, you know, like these, even the ones with safe select. You come over, you flip the plane upside down, and you plug the battery in. Now, why is that a problem? I'm going to show you the reason that's a problem. It's a hiding problem. There's a switch that says on here. You have to turn it off. Why do you have to turn it off? Well, I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate for you why you have to turn it off. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn it back on. Let's simulate this wing being on. We're going to flip this plane over like it was any old flight and you were just quickly trying to get this battery in so you could get up in the air. Okay, so you slide that in there. You go ahead and plug this in. And then you're just quickly, let's quickly get it flipped over, right? Let's get it flipped over, and then let's let safe initiate. Okay? Just watch what happens, guys. And you're sitting here thinking, did I do anything right, or is there something wrong here? Now we've turned it on. That's the correct way to do it. Now watch for the dance. There's your dance. Okay, so now that the dance is done, the ESC fully arms, elevator, ailerons, rudder. Okay, and then when I turn on safe, I have safe tied to D. The manual tells you to tie it to B. I'm going to be putting flaps on this. That's the project tonight. Okay. Nothing happens because we haven't activated safe by giving it throttle. So I'm going to get myself in a safe spot. Hold the plane down. Give it some throttle. Throttle cuts on and tested. Now it's going to be working. Okay? So if I hit panic, nothing happens, right? So we're in good shape. The plane tips. AS3X is activated. If safe were on, it would attempt to level. See, it's kind of trying to roll the plane down to level. And then the best way to see safe operate, of course, is to flip all the way over. Pass the center. Yep, there you go. There you go. There you go. Okay, so now that we've demonstrated what it should do, let's show you what happened to me. And this is just as a warning for you guys, you know, a friendly reminder that it's pretty easy to make mistakes on these things. I just can't believe that for a trainer they made it so easy to screw this up. Um, okay, so unplugging the pack without turning off the switch this time. We're going to leave it in the on condition. Throttle cuts on. We know we're safe. We've already demonstrated it's not going to start the motor. Okay, so we go ahead and plug this in. We try to get this stuff packed in, and then we flip it over, right? Now watch what happens. There, it just initiated safe. Everybody thinks you're fine. Of course, in my case, I would normally not have safe on, so I have my switch out there. Elevator's working, rudder's working, ailerons are working. Okay. That horrible noise is from the decal over there. 
Okay, so now I turn safe on, watch what happens. Nothing, because we haven't given any throttle. I'm gonna do that now. Throttle cut's off. Okay, throttle cut is back on and tested. Now watch what happens when I turn safe on. Oh boy, flips over, crashes into a roof. <laughs> okay, what's it trying to do, guys? It's trying to level the plane to where I plugged in the battery, which, see, at a certain point, it's going to realize it's not at level. There's level. Okay, so it's just going to try to flip you over. Hear that noise? It's struggling to find home. That's what happens. There you go. Safe's off. If I could have got to the switch in time, I wouldn't have crashed. It was kind of a rookie mistake, but if you were a rookie, you wouldn't even know there was a problem with the way we set this up. The way you fix it is you turn it off, you turn it back on, or you unplug the battery and you start from scratch is also fine. Now it's going to relearn the correct uh, level position here. Okay, So now we'll go ahead and shut off the throttle cut, give it some throttle to activate safe, throttle cut's on, now watch it, safe is going to turn on nothing happens because we're already level okay because I was flying along and I said I'm just gonna throw safe on real quick so I can look down the street or something like that next thing you know plane goes flips over uncontrollably it was more than I could overwhelm with the controls so bummer but no big deal got it fixed everybody's happy now so now let's talk about flaps for a minute as you know we've got pretty good size ailerons. They're outboard, meaning that they're on the, the farther part on the wing. Then you've got a large area for an inboard flap. You could also do split flaps on this. And you're probably thinking, but we've got a safe receiver. Do we have an extra channel? And I about, I about fell over when I realized that there is, in fact, a spare channel on this. Um, so what I was going to do is show you how to hook it up real quick. I was torn between these two different choices for servos. If I was doing two servos, I'd probably go with these Emacs ES08MA. That's a Metal Gear analog. These things are really good. They're very powerful. They're probably more powerful than the stock ones, but they're not digital, and I don't care if they're digital. It doesn't matter. In which case, you'd need to have a Y splitter, and you would need to make sure that you point the output, the output, the same direction, so that they move the same direction. If you try to make them symmetrical on the wing, you'll have to have a servo reverser on one of them. Uh, but since there's not already pockets cut in here, we can do it whichever way. And what I got to thinking as I said, why am I going to use two servos? Why don't I just use one? So I'll use this Emacs, this ES3104. Uh, this thing is at 4.8 volts which is what we're going to be at this thing puts out 2.5 kilograms per centimeter that's crazy also known as 35 ounces per inch okay that's a crazy amount of torque this is a metal gear servo but it is not digital who cares i don't care so we will continue onward it's called an es3104 so there's your so it's a 19 gram servo. Um, why am I using such a big servo on this, you might ask? Because those are gonna be some honking big flaps. Look how big the ailerons are. My flaps are gonna be every bit as long, or every bit as big except slightly bigger, in fact. And I don't want to burn out the servo. So I'm just gonna go for the big guns right away. And we'll just, whatever the longest output arm would be is what I'm gonna go with. Okay, so let's, pop this on here and then we'll go ahead and demonstrate the flap channel just double check throttle cut test it it's good by the way I was getting over 20 minutes of flight times on this I couldn't believe it on a 3200 milliamp 3s pack taken off and landing the whole time essentially that's just what I love doing with it okay so you see how it says aux 2 on that receiver there guys I'm going to just plug this in with the brown wire going away from me. And then you'll see that the servo moves to get to the whatever position it needs to be for home. 
and then by default the DX18 it says aux 2 on there so it must be aux 2 so aux 2 that's pretty awesome guys so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go into system setup I'm gonna go down to aircraft type I'm gonna change it from normal to one aileron one flap I'm just gonna be careful the prop doesn't start on me okay so it's back in throttle cuts on and tested I'm gonna go into flap system I'm going to assign it to I'm actually gonna assign it to switch B but you see nothing's happening right well that's because we have to make our channel assignment so we're gonna go to channel assign we're gonna go over to the next screen and it's gonna say E I'm gonna change that to B okay see how it says flap on aux one I actually want that to stay flap okay because currently flap is this see we haven't interfered with our panic at all now I am gonna test this real quick throttle cuts off giving it some throttle throttle cuts back on AS3X is working safe is on attempting to level the plane is happening panic is hit I just want to make sure panic is not going to interfere with this at all now how do I know it's not because panic is on a different channel but you see it's doing nothing now okay so I've lost my panic mode because I have to go into system setup yes channel assign see how aux one says flap looks like aux one got dumb on us so I'm gonna go back into channel assign I'm gonna change that to something else like I guess I'll just call it aux five hmm flap I've got to think about this for a second oh aux 2 let's try aux 2 you see how it's not letting me get to it this is kind of weird I mean I don't really care about it because I'm not going to use panic if anything I'm just going to go to save I'm not going to use panic but some of you guys that are new to this you might actually want to use panic so I'm trying to think of a way to get it to work for you still. I guess I could just inhibit it here. Nope, because then it says NA on that next screen there. Well, I know AUX3 is not going to interfere with AUX2. I'm going to go to aux3 and inhibit it because we're not using that, we're not using that, we're not using that. And you see that's the only problem is that auxiliary 1 says NA right now. And I really kind of need auxiliary 1 to be controlling something, which would be panic so I can assign it to switch I. So in this case, I'm just going to make auxiliary 1... Well, what the heck, I'm just going to make it auxiliary 3 and I'm not going to assign it here and then I'm going to go back to nothing's happening okay so now I'll go into mixing I'll make a special mix for it normal I have to scroll over to switch I and then I make it control I guess gear doesn't seem right see it keeps skipping it it's because I have my flap mode activated so the only way to get around that would be to use auxiliary 2 and not use the flap mode and then I have to make special mixes for this but then there's no elevator correction it's gonna be kind of a pain in the butt I'll figure it out and come right back and tell you how to do it okay so I think I got it figured out I was telling you correct before because we have to get away from being assigned to the same channel that we want all the controls to go through so in our case, that would be, you don't want to call this flap, okay? So if you scroll in to flap, well then that's going to cause you grief when you use flap mode. 
attach to B, okay? So, because auxiliary 2 is actually going to be controlling the flaps. So really, um, in fact, maybe I can set this one to flap, and then I can set this one to aux 1. Yeah, see, it gets all confused. It goes straight from gear to aux 2. So, because normally this would not be aux 1. Aux 1 is beyond gear, okay? So that would be flap. So what we want to do is we want to set this to aux 3, and then we can set this one to flap. It doesn't really matter, but I'm just going to go ahead and call it aux 2, and then I'm going to come over here to aux 2 and make sure that's attached to B, okay? Um, you know what? We are going to just go ahead and do the assignment right here. That might make things a little cleaner in the menu structure. So it says flap now, okay? So now once we go back in to our regular mode, you'll notice that obviously we don't have any throttle, okay? See? Yep, that's what I was thinking would happen because we don't have anything actually attached to it yet. So normally you want to see how it's moving the servo just a little bit. So you got like negative 100 for one side. And you can overdrive these in your servo setup menu. And then we'll do positive 100 for the other extreme. So you can see that now we get that big throw, which you want. And then we can go into servo setup. We can go to flap. And we can go... So what I'm doing is I'm just seeing if it's moving, and it's not. So we don't need to overdrive it at all, because we got the maximum amount of output already. Okay, so then we need to go into mixing and do one weird thing. We have to go to mixing, go to mix one, or whatever mix you want to call it, assign I to aux 3, which is what we assigned to what had been the panic switch, so auxiliary 3. Okay, and then set it to rates 100 and 100, and you can see it right here. It says aux 3, and you can hear that. You guys hear that? See the elevator? That's what happens when you have safe. Okay, so, that panic, rather. Okay, so throttle cuts off, giving it throttle. Throttle cuts back on and tested. Okay, so everything's working, just so you can see that. Now I'm going to go into safe mode, and I'm going to attempt to level the plane by tipping the plane a little bit. Okay, so you can see it's going to try to level the plane, okay? Now the other thing we can do is we can come out of safe, just regular AS3X mode, and then watch this. So I'm going to tip the plane. Now it's going to be hard to see this, but I'm going to hit I, watch what happens. See, now we're going, it's going to try to level us, and then once we're level, it's just out of panic mode, okay? See how that works? Alright, so there you have it. So that's working fine. So we'll come back out of there. And then basically we have just the regular timers and all the rest of the stuff that we already set up on this plane by default. One thing I did learn also, if you try to overdrive the aileron servos, you're going to cause a problem. It causes them to do that weird drift thing that they do because these are digital servos, I believe. Okay, so I'm going to actually pop these out real quick. I'm going to show you. I want a little extra output. If you're depending on safe, this can cause you a little grief, so just be aware of it. I'm going to actually bring it down probably two holes. We'll see if we can even get away with that because it will eventually run into itself. Okay. Okay. I'm going to bring it all the way down. And what this is going to do is it's just going to make the control surface move a little bit further for every amount of output from the servo. So then you're going to end up with more roll authority. One thing that I want on this plane is just a little bit more roll authority. Um, but it will make safe get a little bit oscillation, a little bit of oscillation in it. So just be aware if you do that. I'm actually going to go two from the bottom. I think I might be a little bit too extreme to go all the way to the bottom. Every time you turn on safe, 
when you do something like this, the plane is going to get a little bit wonky. So if you are depending on safe, don't do this. Okay. So now we just have a little bit more authority on the ailerons. Okay, so now the last thing is, of course, we've got some output there. I'm really bummed that it's not allowing me, it's not allowing me to overdrive it at all. So I'm going to go back in here and try this one more time. Okay, see how it moves based on what position we're in? It's definitely not moving that servo, but when I bring it back below 100, it should start walking it back. You see that? Until you get to nothing. Okay, so we can't overdrive it. That's a bummer. I was really kind of hoping I would be able to. So that if I go to mixing, I'm going to try one more method. I'm going to go normal. I'll go flap to flap. Okay, flap to flap. And I'm just going to set it to more whatever. But see, it's not moving. Okay. So we must already be maxed out on the amount of throw, which to be honest with you, is the way it should be out of box on at least every single one of these servos. Okay, so two things about mechanical installation. Real quick, I'm going to tell you. You always want, if you're going to do one servo, you're going to have a linkage that goes between the two, and there'll be a linkage that comes like this. And, and this wing does have just a little bit of dihedral in it. So you want to try to keep your linkage way over on the edge so that you can mitigate some of that dihedral issue that you'd be dealing with. So I'm going to actually run that wire here, and it's going to have a bend up and a bend down, and then there's going to be a linkage that mounts to this. Okay, so in your neutral position, whether you can rotate this either way, it doesn't matter which way it runs, I want this to kind of lock mechanically when it's in the home position because you want to push these things tight so that they're in the neutral position. And then when we deploy the flaps, we're going to be pulling them down and then pulling them down a little bit more. And then both of these are going to come down. The inboard flaps are going to come down. But when we come back to the home position, I want this servo to kind of be straight mechanically. And that will help to keep leverage on it. Plus, you're not loading the servo um, by trying to kind of resist and fight it the whole time. Okay? So this will be lined up. All right, so that's my first thought, and I've got it in the position I want. This is my normal no flaps, takeoff flaps, landing flaps, okay? You'll also notice that on the flap system, I did not do any elevator correction. So I'm just going to go ahead and throw in a little bit. I'm just going to set it to like 10 and then 15, Okay, so we'll see how that works. It's probably going to be fine. And then I'm also going to go into flap system and I'm going to change the speed to, let's just do two seconds. So when I deploy the flaps, it'll take two full seconds for full throw from minus 100 to plus 100. Okay. And you can also see if you look close, the elevator's moving just a little teeny bit. Okay. All right, so that's how that works. Okay, now we got to cut these things in, and uh, that's actually, I don't know, for me, it's kind of when it gets real, because you got to start chopping into your plane, the plane that you love. But you know what? For me, it's also kind of a fun part. Um, I'm actually debating the possibility of maybe just taping this on here, rather than cutting it into a pocket, because it's going to be covered up anyway, and we're not going to interfere with anything in there, because we're not low enough to interfere with anything. Uh, we do need to make sure that we don't get caught up with our wires. So maybe the easiest way to do it, and this is just my servo bag, maybe the easiest way to do it would be to just use um, a piece of tape like this that's got fiberglass reinforcement. And that reinforcement is going to make it just super strong. I've got a couple of different styles here, you know, that depending on what, what I'm doing on a given project. I'm just gonna grab this tape. And then when we get when we get kind of to the last step, we can go ahead and think about maybe pulling this off and doing some glue. I did not make that tape long enough, did I? So in that case, I'm just gonna 
double this back on itself since I'm kind of wasting it anyway. Um, I want that output to be centered somewhat, but that's not positively positively necessary. Now this wing is a separatable wing. You can take it in half. I'm not going to ever take it in half, but some people do that. Um, like I said, I'm not that person. So now the next thing we've got to do is we've got to actually make some cutting happen, which is you, you want to use a, a new X-Acto knife or newer. And I'm getting sick of listening to the AS3X jitters, so I'm actually reaching under and unplugging this. Don't just use your power switch, you'll end up making a mistake. Okay, now my radio is off. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to use a known point, which is here. Um, I need to shine into this wing and verify that there's not any ribs or structural members that are inside this area of the wing. And so I'm just going to do a quick investigation. I'm just taking this light and just putting it under here. Of course, where the decals are, we'll just have to play it by ear. Okay, so I think we're okay. I didn't see anything. It's always a good idea to check on that. And then let's use some tape to mark off where we want to do our... Actually, we'll use this because it's almost out. We want to mark off where we're going to cut just to make our lives easier. I want big flaps because you can always deploy flaps less. Yeah, it might be a little much. Nah, it's not going to be too much. Okay, so I'm just pulling that taut, and that's going to make us a nice, perfect straight line. Rip it just beyond. You can't actually have too much flaps. My J3 Cub, I made my flaps too big. But on this plane, it's going to be awesome. Because this thing really does like to carry forever. Okay, so now obviously we're not going to cut all the way into the inside. We don't want them to run into the switch and stuff like that. So we need to bring them out. Plus we have rubber bands on this. Uh, yeah, you'd actually be past, but I'm still going to go out just a little bit past. Why don't we just go one tape width, just to make things easy. And this is where you do actually need to be careful to be square. I know my camera's not always square with my eyes, so it may not look like I'm square but in the video, but it, it's going to be square when I'm done. And how am I going to check that? I'm going to just use this. This is a good gauge for that. Okay, so I need to square this up just a little bit. Okay, good enough for what I'm doing. That thing just fell out. That was awesome. Mm, it's pretty close. I'm still going to walk it over just a touch. Now, it's kind of weird because these decals aren't perfectly located, evidently. Because uh, when I look at where this is placed compared to where that's placed... It's not exactly perfect, but you know what? Imperfections. Those decal placements don't really matter to the manufacturer. And it's still going to look good, so I'm not too worried about it. Um, so now we need to know where we're going to cut. I Normally I would say just, just go ahead and go straight up and then make this your gap. But I actually want to have a little bit. I'm probably just going to go, let's call it one piece of tape. I'm just thinking out loud for a second. That's not going to be much material, is it now? But if I bring it in, it's just going to look stupid. You know what? We're just doing the whole thing. We can always add material back if we need to. <laughs> I'm kidding. You can't really. Um, so now when we cut, it's going to be quite simple. We're basically just going to take our X-Acto knife and just go straight through it. But I want to just double check before I get too far ahead of myself that I'll be able to support my cut on the other side of the wing. It does look okay. And we do want to make them nice and straight. Because when these flaps deploy, I'd like it to make it almost like a Fowler flap. Um, so I'm actually going to cut it at an angle. Commensurate to that. Because then when it comes down, you actually... Hmm, no, I don't know if I want to do Fowler flaps. I might do... Not a split flap, guys. I said that wrong. I didn't mean to say split flap. I might want them to be a Fowler. Let's try. I'm going to get my hinges out and I'll show you what I'm talking about. 
a bunch of different ways to skin this cat. I do have these dynam hinges. I never seem to use them. Why don't we use them for this project? Hmm, good idea. Spare parts, nice. There's a part number if you want it. But these things are nice because they'll pull out and away. Sorry, my camera crew scared the crap out of me. She was standing in here. So if you saw the uh, camera shutter, it was just me being scared of my wife. It's like normal for most of you guys. Um, okay, so this is going to go like that, and then this is going to go like that, and it's going to pull out and away. And it's going to be awesome. But you know what? I have been instructed that I need to go up for dinner. So I'm going to do that, just like a good boy. We'll come back and finish this very soon. You wait and see. All right, guys, so we had to take a little break there. We've got these, uh, basically we're just going to cut on the inside of this line. And we're going to use these these hinges. So we got a nice sharp X-Acto knife blade. Usually when I cut these things I want to just be really careful to get the right angle because you can't do this part twice. It might be easier to just cut it at the same angle. So I'm going to bring it in like that. So I'm just taking the blade more or less along the right there. And this this blade is actually not quite long enough to make that cut. So I'm kind of wondering if I'll have better luck at a different method, but so I'm just gonna really carefully work my way across. Just kind of score on the top of the surface. Come to a stop. Now I want this to be square. Going through the decals, it's definitely a lot harder to cut. There's some tape here from some damage. Not from my crash the other day, it was from before I got it. So actually, the damage I had was concentrated to the nose cone and then the the tail boom okay, okay. and we'll just work this initial cut Try to get the right angle. Then we'll probably cut a little bit more shallow. Hoping for the best possible results. Don't expect perfection because you'll be frustrated with yourself. It's not going to be perfect and that's okay. It won't matter. These things will work just fine and they'll look good too. Alright, cool. So now the easiest way to continue the cut in my experience is to use something like this. This just happens to be a 20,000 shim. And I've had pretty good luck using these. Got to try to start from having a fairly clean end. And what I found, I got a little exhaust vent here. I usually heat it up with a torch. Just get that discoloration good. Now this is going to melt that plastic, and so I need to have my exhaust vent on. Now I'm going to cut this, I'm not going to cut that. See, now I can just follow that cut that I've already started. Make a nice, really pretty close to perfect cut. Okay, and just make sure you control the depth because it's going to get it's going to be cooler the further down this stick you get okay 
So we don't want to overdo it because we only are going to cut to a certain angle. So now this side, of course, we've cooled down quite a bit. So I'm going to have to go ahead and get this heated back up. Make sure you flip it over and heat both sides, otherwise it'll try to bend on you. Just letting that smoke go off of there a little bit. Okay, so it's not uh, hot where my fingers are, but then I can bring the heat down to where I need it and just kind of saw and that gives you a greater level of control in cutting you can bring it right to where you need it and obviously this is going to cool off as you go but now you got that nice little gap so that you'll be able to clear as the as the flap mechanism moves so now we need to heat this up but we want to heat a little bit less of it I want to make sure I know where to now you can do this just with a knife if you want but I've just had a lot easier time with these shims on most of these. Because then they open up just a small gap. Now it's glowing a little bit, so this is pretty hot this time. But I need to work a little quicker on this cut. So we want to mimic this angle here. Just move them with a purpose. That's the, the, way, the best way to describe what I'm doing right now is I'm moving fairly quick. You don't want to take a ton of material off, but a little bit of a gap is actually not a big problem, okay? Okay, now we're, we're getting cooled off, I can tell, because it's not wanting to slide anymore. So you see, this time I'm kind of just heating the tip. Both sides. This should be enough heat to cut through all the way now. We're getting really close guys, I can tell. But we don't want to do this with a cool blade, you'll end up making a nasty cut. But I only want that tip sharp, that sharp tip there to actually be hot. Okay. I can hear and feel the cutting. Okay, so we're gonna have to get a little bit more aggressive to get all the way through the other side, I think. We must have some decals we're working with. Okay, there we go, nice little glow. Okay, so this is gonna go real quick now. Okay, so now we got that one separated. We'll just let that hang on how it needs to. Now we're going to quickly go do the other side. You want to kind of do these at the same time. You don't want to cut half of it and then come back two days later. Do the other half because you'll have bad results. When you do this freehand stuff like this, you got to be careful to be as consistent as you can. I went a little bit too slow at the beginning of that. So we removed quite a bit more material than I had hoped. Which just makes it a lot easier to keep that angle consistent. I'm going to heat back a little bit from the edge for this middle, more of a plunging cut. good guys I'm really sorry I just realized I was off off the mark a little bit there with the camera Now we're getting back to just heating up the tip.
it depends on if you're right or left handed how you're going to do this but for me I'm right handed so I'm going to cut like this now remember it's cool up here so you could let it sit for a while and it'd be fine but it's hot on the very end okay So I got a little bit of remnant there. Now you could use just an X-Acto knife. You know, I have one that I use just for hot blade stuff. But I found that the X-Acto knife in this type of application is just very difficult to reach it where you need it. And it's hard to get that consistent angle. It's very difficult. There's a lot of people that are better at freehand stuff than I am. But you can see, yeah, see, I kind of got a crappy angle there. But not the end of the world. It'll be fine. This plane's seen better days. Actually, seen a lot worse days, too. <laughs> okay. So let's get this stick put down. Now that we're done, we can probably go ahead and make sure the gas is off. And then shut off the exhaust. We'll run that for another five or ten minutes. Okay, so this side was already about to break, so I don't have to worry about it. And as you can see, we got pretty good on the flap, but then we just had a little extra melting here, which is not great, but it's also not the end of the world. This little part here, I'm going to just cut it with a sharp knife. You can see that this doesn't make a perfect finish you can go back in and spot and trim where you really need to get it straight so it looks good and that worked out good you got the e-flight there that's kind of cool so now at this point we need to hinge them see this side turned out quite a little bit better not a big deal to have a little bit of imperfections there it's definitely worth it considering having the flaps is going to be a huge improvement in the performance of this aircraft. It's going to be a lot funner too. It's not It's not hard to fly this plane and I can bring it in and land it. I'll tell you what though, it takes it takes a little bit more skill to try to land a plane without flaps. Um, when it comes to trying to slow it down I had a little bit of residue from the other night I was working on a project on the table saw there and that residue came off on there got these little sanding blocks. I'm going for one of these. See if I can take off that little mark, that imperfection. Seems like it came off good. So now I'm going to just try to soften the edge just a little bit. Not a lot, just a little. Otherwise I think we're good. Okay, so there's one side. We'll just do the same thing here. I'm just pushing that down. Okay. Now you could just go in here with a piece of tape if you wanted, and that piece of tape would be just just fine. I just kind of want to make this thing pull down in a way so I can get that that Fowler flap where you get a little airflow through there. It'd be ideal if this was shaped like an airfoil a little bit more because right now you're sort of having a pseudo airfoil. It's triangular, you know. But the problem is if you go full out airfoil on it, then it's going to eh, there's a bump in this tape. I'm going to flatten that out. See? If you go full out airfoil, well then you'd have to actually cut this at an angle or have your curve 
maybe you have a hot wire, but trust me, it's a lot harder to, than it looks to do that. I've tried it. It doesn't work very well. Not in my experience. Okay, so I'm going to probably do probably three on each side. How many do I have? I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Yep, so we'll just use one package on this. The rationale behind three is just for the simple fact that we want to make sure we have enough. <coughs> enough support. It's a fairly big, fairly big flap. I think I'm going to tape these on just as a means to an end, a temporary, temporary solution. So this tape is proven to be pretty decent. I need a little bit more gap. Trying to make the gap even between the aileron and then the uh, the inboard portion of the wing. And again, there's a lot of little steps in this that aren't exactly uh, especially challenging. This is one of them. It's not not particularly challenging. It's just just a matter of doing it. This is a very big flap, so it's actually pretty easy to do this compared to some of the projects I've done in the past like on that Airbus A320 those were super complicated flaps and uh, with this they were really complicated especially the way I tried to give myself all sorts of restrictions to meet my engineering specs <laughs> I'm just trying to decide which way these are supposed to go I can't remember it's been so long since I used them oh there you go looks like the short side is actually supposed to be on the on the flap not this way yep that's right this will actually create more action out okay so I know that I want the hinge to hang right over the top probably better to cut and then slip into the cut versus trying to just force it in like that that didn't work so hot because you end up displacing the the foam in a bad way now these aren't glued or anything yet I'm just sticking them in there loose for now I'm going to have to use a gap filling glue in this on that one since I cut it stupid. So there you go. And then we'll just do those all the way across. This tape is going to be a little bit in the way I think so we'll just pull that back a little bit. I'm going to just depress this tape a little bit give myself a mark reference point so as you can see it's not a particularly challenging thing and if this servo doesn't work out for doing the action for both sides then I'll just do one on each side that does significantly increase the cost of doing this so I'd really rather not do that make sure you keep that cut nice and square cool
So we'll use those same pieces of tape on the other side, but let's see this action. Oh, yes. That's gorgeous. Really cool. Okay, so those flaps are going to work nicely. So now we'll just do the exact same thing over here. Make sure our gap is even between the aileron and the wing. And if it's not, just make it so. Then I'll put my tape this way and learn from my last one. Okay, so we got that in place. Try to do these about the same for symmetry reasons. Yeah, you could probably get out of measuring tape or whatever, but I just don't really see a lot of value in that. I kind of want them to match with the, the decals, which is actually not perfectly symmetrical, to be honest. So when we're done putting these hinges in, then we can go ahead and work out the mechanism. And you're probably thinking, oh, don't forget to glue those in. Yes, I'll glue them in last, because that's when it starts getting hairy when everything starts binding up and causing all sorts of grief. That one I did not have it very square. It was like the front to back was not quite lined up properly. Looks like at one point this was broken here so I want to be mindful of that. Okay, so we got those in. Probably use a mucilage for that to glue those in. You could use CA if you wanted to, it'd be probably fine as well. But uh, mucilage is gonna give us a really good bond and it's gonna work, work well from right away. So if you don't remember from the first video, this is a Dynam, a Dynam kit that you can buy for those uh, Fowler flap hinges. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Very low friction. Barely any. This one's got a little bit of friction. Where is the friction coming from? Hmm. You know what? I think it's coming from here. I'm just going to cut a new slice. I'm just having problems with this one. See if we can get away with not having that same problem. Oh yeah, that's that feels a lot better. Yeah, much better. Now I don't think we're gonna have that much deflection, guys, but it'd be kind of cool if we did. This one here actually needs to come over just a hair. Start my cut here and just walk it toward where we started. See, now it's kind of like a V-shape. Yep, that squared it up nicely. Very little friction. All right, perfect. So now the next step is to figure out my mechanism that's going to actuate both of these flaps. And this is probably about the time where I'm going to say, why did you have to use one servo? It is going to complicate things quite a bit. Because if you had two servos, then all you'd have to do is basically make them, make them move and push this out. So like, actuate, actuate, actuate. That's the way they work in the dynam planes usually. 
but since these are a little bit more complicated now I have to think about that for a minute alright I'm gonna get some wire out and we'll come right back guys